welcome. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup and makeup brushes. Today, we are going to be talking about the Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum Collection brush set. And I picked this up during the initial launch. They went quickly. I was very lucky to be able to purchase one of these because, you know, I know a lot of people were trying to get them and it was one of those things where the circle kept spinning and spinning and spinning. And finally, mine went through. So I was very happy to be able to pick this up. And there are 25 brushes in this set. The reason I want to talk about it now is because they are restocking this Wednesday, May 19th. So the 25 piece set that I have will be restocking on Wednesday, May 19th. But next month, um, sometime in early June, there will be an 11 piece set. So 11 of these brushes will be included in the set. I do not know which brushes will be in the set yet. And then after that, they will also be releasing some smaller brushes and they have discussed potentially releasing them individually in the future. But at this time, the only thing that I have seen confirmed is the 25 piece set for Wednesday, May 19th at 6 p.m. BST time. And then the 11 piece set in early June and smaller sets later throughout the summer. So let's go ahead and let me show you how these came packaged. So the brushes come in this big round container. By the way, they were in a box that it was just a, a really cute box. I can't remember what it said on it, um, but there was like this cute quote on the inside, something about, a, you know, I think there's a makeup emergency or something like that. So anyway, this cylinder here is going to be, you know, a cardboard, it's, you know, fairly thick. And you've got all these pictures from Katie Jane Hughes here at the top. Let's see if I can match them up. All right, so it says, with love, Katie Jane Hughes. And you've got, you know, a ton of her different makeup looks here. And it says, taking inspiration from art store painter brushes, as that's what makeup is, after all. And inside this 25-piece set, there was this, which I actually have mine separated. But here, let me just show you. So these go in here. And then this clips on so you have this little storage container and oh I didn't clip mine on securely hold on a second so you can keep your brushes in here so they can remain dust free or you can travel with them now packing brushes like this wouldn't be a great idea right because they're banging around you know you could damage them so she was very smart and she included something else. She included this microfiber cloth and it says KJH and Spectrum Collections here. It matches the set. All of the brushes were wrapped in this towel, which was then in here. So that was a great way to package them to make sure everything was secure for shipping. As soon as I got mine, obviously I opened the, these up and washed them. This is going to be like a pleather case here. You've got, you can see some little decorative detailings on here. And one of the great things about this is you can use both containers as lids. So what I do is I keep all of my brushes in one and then after I use one, but I'm not ready to wash it, I stick it in the other lid. So it's kind of like my clean and my dirty bucket. Now also included in the set, you know, you just have a little postcard here. I'm not gonna read this, it's just a little postcard. But then she also included a brush guide for all 25 of the brushes. Right. So we're going to briefly go through each of these brushes. We're not gonna do like a ton of comparisons or anything today, but I wanna give you kind of a chance to see what each of these brushes look like. And I'm gonna share with you which ones are my favorites. Again, I don't know which ones will be included in the 11 piece set, but hopefully some of those will be included. I'll give you my overall thoughts on these this collection as a whole, because again, I've been using it for quite a while now. All right, so let's start off with brushes one through eight, which are essentially the face brushes. So we have number one, which has a round ferrule here. This is the powder brush, and it's also recommended for use as a bronzer. Again, all of the brushes in this collection are synthetic, and you can see the amount of snap that you have on these fibers. And just for a quick size comparison, you can see that these handles are going to be 
longer handle brushes. This is the Surratt face brush here. So you can see headwise, the Surratt is definitely going to be larger overall. And then this is the Chikahoto F01, again, much shorter handle. And you can see that the brush head is going to be larger overall. And in contrast, this is the Sonya G Designer Pro. So you can see, again, they will have longer handles. And you can see that the Designer Pro is about half the size um, for the brush head. And I apologize, some of my face brushes from Sonia G are drying, so I don't have those for comparison right now. But you can see that I would say that this is smaller. It's on the smaller side for, you know, a big fluffy powder brush, but it is a large brush. It's definitely, you know, it's something you could use still for blush if you like to use bigger brushes for that. Again, I can see why this would be a great choice for a bronzer as well. And number two is going to be a traditional blush brush. And you can see that we've got the oval ferrule here. So it's going to be more of the paddle style. And, you know, this is the Surratt cheek brush here and the Sojuji Designer Pro, which is going to be slightly smaller than the KGH number two. But I just wanted to show you. So it is, you know, a traditional blush brush and it works very nicely. Next, I'm going to show you three and four together. So three is this one here that it has more of the rounded top and four is going to be angled. These are both duo fiber brushes and these are meant to give a little bit more, um, you know, of a softer finish. So if you're working with something that's very pigmented, this works great for that. And they're really, you know, these are good for creams and for powders. And one of the recommendations here is you know, to just kind of be able to get a soft wash of color. So I have actually really been enjoying these with cream products to kind of get a lighter wash in certain places. And I think they are great brushes and I don't have a ton of duo fiber brushes in my collection. So I think these are both great. They both have round ferrules. The number four here, the angled one is pinched a little bit more so than the number three. One thing I want to mention about the number three is this is also recommended as a foundation brush. And I have found that this works very nicely with the thinner, more serum style foundations. I really like using it for that and, you know, blending out like under eye concealer and so forth. Anything that you just want to have like a light blend on, it's obviously going to be a little bit too soft for like buffing things in, but it works really nice with things with a, a runnier consistency or with something that you don't want to blend out too much. And this is number five. So let me just show you, here's four versus five. You can see that five is going to be a little bit larger than number four. And this is just going to be your angled cheek brush. This is great if you want to have a really soft wash of color. And it's because of the amount of flex and snap you have here and just how much this will bend because of the angle and so forth, you're really going to want to use this with things that you want more of a soft wash of color with. So for me, I personally like to use just a small amount of bronzer. I don't like to use a ton. So this works really well for me. It also works great with more pigmented blushes and things like that as well. So that's what I like to use number five for. Number six is the traditional paddle style foundation brush. I personally don't really use these too much. Katie Jane Hughes recommends this for foundation, but also for pressing powder into the skin. So if you want to actually press it in, that's what this is really great for. And you can see that this has an angle here, which allows you to kind of get into tight corners and so forth. I have to say that this brush style in general is not one of my favorites. So I really, I don't use this one very much. And number seven looks kind of like a shader brush. I have used this for eyeshadow. I like it for cream eyeshadows. It's great for smudging around the lash line. So that's one use for it. And another use is also this doubles as the concealer brush in this set. So this is recommended for smudging along the lower lash line, as well as for concealer or anywhere that you need like a little detailed placement of something. I personally like to use this one for 
eyeshadow, particularly um, creams, anything that I just kind of want to kind of place on. And I like to smudge a little bit under the eyes with this. So this is the number seven. And I just wanted to show you for size reference, you can see here that, sorry, mine's a little deformed, but this is actually like even, you can see it's like evenly domed. This is the Sonia G Soft shader here, which is my favorite eye brush. Again, you can see that the KJH has longer handles, but brush head wise, you can see that this uh, Sonia G is going to have a little bit more flex and give because it does have longer bristles. It's also gonna be more narrow there. So just to give you an idea on the size of this. Okay, and then we have brush number eight. So I misspoke before when I said 25 piece set included the 24 brushes and the towel and so forth. It's actually 25 brushes because there are two of the number eight brushes. I actually didn't realize that. I never read the pamphlet, so I was just didn't realize there were two of these. Um, but this is her favorite brush. I do really like this. This is the all over everything brush. So you can use it for powder, highlight, contour. Um, you can use it, you know, basically anything you can think of. This is what it's for. If you watch like KJH Academy or any of her tutorials on Instagram, you'll see that she uses the number eight brush quite a bit. So again, um, for me, I like to use this one for under eye concealer quite a bit. And I have also used it for highlight. Those are probably my two main purposes for this. And let me show you what this looks like with the Sonia G, that mini brush. So this is one I was thinking of, the mini cheek from Sonia G. You can see that the mini cheek is going to be a lot larger. And the, another difference here is the KJH has a round ferrule and the Sonia G has a pinched ferrule here. So that's gonna give you a different brush shape. This is really a great brush and I, again, I really like using this one with, for cream highlights. I also like it for powder highlights, but you know, for cream highlights, I find sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what brush you wanna use and I often use my fingers. I think this is a great alternative. Okay, next, moving on to number nine. This is going to be, you know, something that you can use for eyeliner. It works great for cream eyeliner. Personally, I actually think it's a little bit, I prefer something a little bit more narrow, so it's not a favorite for me, but it works really well for that purpose. The This is kind of what she likes to use as her cleanup brush. So using it to clean up around the lip line or like clean up in a wing and so forth. I actually do like this for stretching out like a liquid eyeliner or well, anytime I'm trying to do a wing, this is great for stretching that out. So that's kind of how I like to use this one. For comparison, here's the Esum T05. You can see the handle lengths are about the same, but you can see that the Esum is going to be, um, you know, maybe like 60 to 70% of the width, but they are very similar. Otherwise, the KJH obviously has shorter bristles, but another great liner brush. Number 10 here. This is going to be like a typical blending brush. This is a larger blender. You can use this to blend eyeshadow. Again, it's also recommended for things like concealer. And I think, you know, overall, it's just a small, like everything brush. I personally like to use this one more for blending in the crease. It's great for like when you're trying to kind of buff out the crease. Cause for me, it's kind of large for a blender brush. Just a couple of size comparisons. This in the red handle is the Sonia G Crease Pro. You can see that it's gonna be significantly smaller. And this is the Esum V34 brush. You can see that this one has a longer handle in the Esum. Again, this is the V series. The other one we looked at was a T series. And these two are both synthetic, but you can see that obviously the brush shapes are very different. This is just gonna be domed at the top, whereas this is more angled here to create a rounder look. And the Katie Jane Hughes one is actually a little bit thicker in diameter. Now this is brush number 11, and this might be my favorite brush in the set. So this is also known as her favorite eyeshadow blending brush. I really love this for creams, for powders. I could do the entire eye look with this. You know, you can use it in the crease. You can just blend out things on the lid. It's just fantastic. And I really like the size of this. And just for comparison, here is the Sonia G Soft Shader. So you can see the difference in size. 
This is a really nice brush. Again, synthetic versus go, in my opinion, they perform very, very differently. But if you look at the flex on here and the flex on here, it's gonna be a little bit more similar. And I think this works fantastic for powders, but I, you know, I tend to use my synthetic brushes more so for cream products, and this is a really great one. And next we have brush number 12. And this is another one that you can use along the lash line. You can use, I've used this for uh, lip liner and so forth, like, well, for, as a lip brush. You can use this for spot concealing and so forth. So I think this is a really nice brush. And in comparison to the one that we looked at before, here's the number seven we looked at before. The number 12, you can see, is just sort of, it's like little sister. Again, this is just deformed shape because of the way mine dried. But you can see that the number seven has more of a, a rainbow shape, whereas this is going to be flatter on top on the 12. But otherwise, it's essentially just a smaller version of it. So they're both great brushes. It just depends whether you prefer something larger or smaller. Next, we have number 13. And this is her larger version of a pencil brush. And, you know, I like to use this more for the inner corner. I've also used this for concealing and so forth because a lot of times I like to kind of swirl when I'm trying to conceal like a blemish or something. So I've used it more for those purposes, but it's it's a nice brush. It's one that I don't use a ton. So this one isn't really my favorite. It's a little bit large for me to use as a pencil brush. So again, I pretty much use it more as like inner corner. Just for reference, this is the Sonuji pencil one brush that I use most of the time. And usually I prefer more pointed pencil brushes. So that's part of um, my thing as well. And you can just see that the difference in size here between the two of these. All right, and next we have brush number 14, which actually looks like a smaller version of the foundation brush number six. And I like this brush. You can see the amount of flex and give here. This works really well with if you're like using one of those like cream or liquid shadows that you need to be careful not to make a huge mess with, um, this works really great for getting precisely where you want it with that. And that's what I, I like about this brush. I also like to use this one as a lip brush. So I think this is a great, very versatile brush. This is one that I like a lot. And then we have brush number 15. This is another one that I really like a lot. This is more of that soft shader style that I like, and it is small. It's easy to kind of pat on shadows. It works well with um, any sort of like metallic or glittery shade where you're patting it on, you don't want to get fallout. It also works great, again, for working with cream shadows because it's small enough to really target where you want. And you can see that this one has more of a rounded head. So you can see that there's not a, a whole lot of flex with this. I really like this brush. Next, we have brush number 16, and this is more of the traditional lip brush shape. You've got more of that longer rectangle. I have to say, this is a, a shape that I personally don't gravitate towards. It works well for your lips. It works well um, with liquid and metallic shadows as well. It's just not one that I typically use too often. All right, so this is number 17, and I really like this one. It reminds me of the Sonya G um, mini booster. Um, but regardless, it's like a small crease brush and I like it for that. I really like it for like outer corner or detail work. I think it's a great brush. Let me show you a couple comparisons. So from Katie Jane Hughes set, we have number eight and number 10. And you can see that this is kind of just like a smaller version of number eight. They have the same shape. Number 10 is a little different because it's actually got a little bit more gradation of the hair length here. But number eight, this is kind of just like a mini version of that. And here's the Sonya G Mini Booster. So you can see that the bristles are a little bit longer on the KJH. It's also a little bit of a smaller brush. So this really you know, works well for details. And again, because it's synthetic, the amount of flexibility and so forth is going to differ a little bit. This works great for inner corner. It works great to kind of target a deeper shade in the crease. It works great for adding a deeper shade to the outer V, you know, things like that. So I think this is a great brush. And of course, you can use this, you know, on your face for any detail work as well. And number 18, this is another pencil brush, but you can see this is smaller than the other one we looked at. 
And this one works better for me for a pencil brush just because it's a little bit smaller. Again, I typically gravitate more towards ones with a little bit of point, but I do like this one. Um, so out of the brushes in this set, this is the pencil brush I like. And number 19, this is 17, this is 19. So I just wanted to show you that number 19 is slightly larger, same general shape for the most part here. Um, it's just going to be kind of like a slightly bigger version of the number 17 that I like. Now between the two of them, I prefer the 17. I like the slightly smaller brush, but this is another great one. You can work with this in the crease and so forth as well. For me, it's a little bit bigger, so I actually have a better time using a deep shadow with the 17 without making a mess compared to this, but this one works great for me in the crease. And number 20 here is just going to be another one that, you know, is kind of like that flat concealer style brush in the soft shader kind of shape. This works great with liquid and cream shadows as well. That's pretty much how I use it. You've got this rounded edge. I've also used this to clean up around the lip line and for lining the eyes as well. So this is brush number 21, and this is just going to be a small pointy little like pencil brush style shape. This is one that's recommended for using with brow products in your brow. It's also recommended for doing a cut crease, which is, you know, something I don't do very often. So it's not one I use too much for that. For me, you know, I use this more as a traditional pencil or pencil brush. So I'll use this under the eye in the inner corner and so forth. This is also one you can kind of use to get like a softer, more diffused wing and things like that. So I think this is a nice brush. And 22 is going to be your traditional eyeliner brush. So I personally like to use shadow and like water or like mixing medium or something to create like a liquid liner sometimes. And this is the style of brush that works great for that. So 22 is kind of just your quintessential eyeliner brush. Okay, and number 23 is the only dual ended brush in the set. You wanna make sure that you always store brushes like this with the spoolie side down, just because this side cannot get deformed here, whereas the bristles on this could. So this, you know, you can use this for eyebrow products and so forth. I have actually used it more for like other things. I think the last time I used it, you can see I stained it a little bit, but I think I used it for a wing. And, uh, you know, it's just a really cute little angled brush. And then the spoolie is nice. It's a substantial spoolie that works well. And number 24 is just another eyeliner brush. And you can see how long this one is. So here's 22 in comparison. You can see the difference between these. And, you know, this is for somebody with more artistic ability than I have, where you can create some of the more dramatic wings and, you know, you can use this more like, like an artist painting. So, um, for me, it's one that I'm not skilled enough to really get a lot of use out of, but I like the idea of it being included in this set. All right, so let me just briefly share with you what my favorite brushes are from this set. I really like the two dual fiber brushes, the three and the four. I think these are great. And for me in my collection, you know, I feel like these are not as common. So I really appreciate it having these brushes in there and I like the way these work well with a cream and powder products. So these are two of my favorites. I would also include the number eight brush. I think this is a great everything brush. Personally, I like it a lot for under eye concealer and for highlight, um, but I just, I think it's a great everything brush. In addition, I would pick the number seven. I like having kind of this, that smudger brush. I really like this one. And this brush, I forgot to mention, it actually reminds me of the Chantecaille Eye Blend brush, which is also synthetic, but this is one of my favorite smudging brushes. You can see that the KGH one is just gonna be a little bit bigger. Handle-wise, you can see KGH is larger as well. And then the other brushes that I have included are all, you know, eye brushes. So I have the number 14 here because I think this one's a little bit more unique with the pointed shape and it works so well if you are trying to target a specific color, um, something that's like liquidy and a little bit messy. It's, it's just really great for that. I have also included the number 17 
Um, again, I think this is great for working in smaller areas and for also adding like deeper shades without, you know, blending it out too much or making too much of a mess. This is also stiff enough that you can kind of softly diffuse something. And then I have the number 12 here, which again, I like to use on the lower lash line. And you can also pack on, you know, eyeshadow and so forth with this as well. I have the number 11, which is probably, you know, this is definitely one of my favorites here, but I like this one for packing on eyeshadow. And then another one is the number 15, which I, the number 11 and the 15, I use both with creams, but I tend to use the 11 with creams and powders more, whereas the number 15, I pretty much always use with um, creams or, or like a dampened powder shadow, you know, so something with moisture. So those are my favorite nine brushes. And if I were KGH and I were making this 11 piece set, I would definitely include those nine. And then the other ones I would include would be, so I would include the powder brush because every good set usually has a powder brush. So I would put that in if I were her and I would either go with the number two cheek brush because in my opinion, you can't really have too many cheek brushes. Or if I wanted to kind of make sure I had something for every area, I would add in the 23, the dual ended brush. So if I were making the 11 piece set, that's kind of what I would have included. And overall, is this 25 piece brush set worth it? Um, you know, I personally am very happy I picked it up. I love Kitty Jane Hughes. I think she is incredible and she seems like such a nice human being. Obviously, I don't know her, but she always makes sure to try to answer people on Instagram. She always shares like tips and tricks. You know, she's not like hiding like, you know, makeup artist secrets or anything like that. She's truly knowledgeable and trying to share her knowledge with everybody else. So I truly appreciate that. And I really like the idea that I was able to support her just by purchasing this brush set. And obviously I get something out of it too. So I personally think the brush set is worth it. Um, you know, if you have a lot of brushes already, you know, you, you don't need all of the ones that are in this set. There are definitely brushes that you know, I don't really reach for as much and you may have duplicate shapes of already. So is the entire set worth it? That's really going to be personal based on what you already have. Another thing I'd like to say is, you know, I like synthetic brushes, but I still prefer natural hair. I find that they do perform a little bit better in my opinion. Maybe that's just, you know, because of my skill level, obviously somebody who's like a makeup artist, they can get any brush to work beautifully for them. But for me, I still prefer using natural hair brushes. I do want to include more synthetic brushes into my routine and so forth. You know, I think it's great to have on hand for creams and powders. And I'm always looking for a synthetic option that could actually replace a natural hair option as well. So, you know, I'm very happy that I picked these up. But if I had to choose between natural hair versus synthetic, I would still choose natural hair personally. And overall, though, I would say, yes, this is a great set. It's worth it. If you already have a lot of brushes and you're not like starting from scratch, I would check out what the smaller sets are that she's offering. Um, I would definitely be interested to see what she has in the 11 piece set. I have to say, I really, really love the way that she packaged everything, how she included the microfiber towel, which, you know, I love to keep that on my lap and just kind of wipe off my brushes in between use. And I love this actual container, you know, it's easy to travel with these brushes. If you're not traveling, but you're somebody who maybe you don't use makeup every day and you want to keep your brushes covered, you know, that's good. Or it, it's just, it's really nice. She kind of thought of everything with this set. And I love how she gave us this little like brush guide and everything also. And one of the reasons she has numbers instead of names on the brushes is because she wants you to use your own creativity, use the brush for whatever purpose you want instead of putting a label in, label on it. Because I personally am one of those people where I see, oh, it's an eyeshadow brush. I need to use it for my eyes. You know, like I kind of go with what it says and it, it takes me a while before I start breaking the rules. So uh, I like the fact that she kind of left things to be used in multiple ways. So. Overall, I think it's a great set and I love being able to support her in this way. 
So this set is coming back at 6 p.m. BST. And, um, you know, so check that out if you're interested to see when that is for your uh, time zone. But overall, I think this is a great set. It's definitely worth it. If you don't want to get all 25 brushes, if you're not interested in this set, definitely check out the smaller sets that she has coming forth soon. Again, the 11 piece set will be out in June. Smaller sets will be following. I don't have like any idea exactly when, but they did say during the summer. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I hope to see you next time. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and have a great day. Stay safe and healthy and I'll see you very soon.